In February 1946, about 20,000 members of the Royal Indian Navy across the port cities of Bombay, Calcutta, Karachi, Madras, Jamnagar, Vishakapatnam, Cochin, and even Aden and Bahrain in West Asia and the Persian Gulf observed a strike that proved to be a mortal blow to the entire British Empire. Because it was the first time that an armed force was turning its ire at their own commanders. It was a chain of events that led to the Great Naval Mutiny. On one hand, India was in turmoil because of the trial of the Indian National Army soldiers who had fought with Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose against the British. On the other, the forces were massively demoralized. The Second World War had led to a rapid expansion of the Royal Indian Navy. In 1945, it was 10 times larger than it was in 1939. But when the war ended, the British troops were given medals, while the Indian troops had to face unemployment. But the final trigger was the terrible living conditions that the Indian sailors had to face. On the 17th of February 1946, when 1,500 Indian ratings on board the HMIS Talwar in Bombay asked for decent food, the British officers responded by saying, beggars can't be choosers. The next day, the men decided to launch a slowdown protest during which they carried out their duties slowly. To this, the furious commanding officer F.W. King called them sons of coolies. The men stopped working completely and raised the slogan, Quit India. When the message spread, 11 shore establishments and 60 other Royal Navy ships harboured at Bombay joined the protest. All hell broke loose. A strike which had been started as a protest against poor quality food now took the shape of a nationalist movement. On the 19th of February, a Naval Central Strike Committee was elected. It formulated a charter of demands that included the release of all political prisoners, equal pay and the eviction of British nationals from India, among other things. Soon, radio messages were sent to naval establishments across the country and even ships at sea, urging all hands to join the strike. Everywhere, the Union Jack was pulled down and in its place, the three flags of the Congress, the Muslim League and the Communist Party were hoisted. A total of around 80 ships, four flotillas, 20 shore establishments and more than 20,000 ratings joined the mutiny. The masses wholeheartedly supported the soldiers of the Navy. In fact, in Bombay, a day-long general strike was called in support of the mutineers. In the following days, the sailors left their posts and with the public jumped into lorries and marched in procession on all thoroughfares in the city. However, although there was popular support, the mutiny lacked the support of political leaders who saw the dangers of a mutiny on the eve of independence. Mahatma Gandhi and Muhammad Ali Jinnah both condemned the unplanned uprising. British Prime Minister Clement Attlee gave orders to put down the revolt and rebels were given an ultimatum to surrender. Naval Chief Admiral John Henry Godfrey had fighter planes flying over the harbour and soon a large naval fleet was summoned from Trincomalee, Sri Lanka. Sardar Patel met the strike committee and assured them that their demands would be looked into if they ended the strike. Thus, on the 22nd of February 1946, under pressure, the strike committee released its last statement saying, Our strike has been a historic event in the life of our nation. For the first time, the blood of men in the services and in the streets flowed together in a common cause. We in the services will never forget this. Jai Hind! Between 300 and 500 members were dismissed from the Navy, arrested and court-martialed. Sadly, the lack of political support made the uprising an isolated event. 
but this five-day strike is considered by historians as one of the defining moments that convinced the British that there was no hope for them in India. In 2001, the Royal Indian Navy mutiny was set in stone when a statue commemorating the event was inaugurated at Kulaba in Mumbai.